All right, today we are here with Scott Petty from PC Wizard, and we're going to be finding out things about internet security and having more security on your devices. So Scott, so thrilled that you're here with us today. Tell us a little bit about PC Wizard and what you do. Thank you very much for having us today, Carrie. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, we are your cyber defenders. So we're over in Nova Scotia, Canada, and we work with organizations all across Canada um, and some into the US as well. Um, we focus primarily on small businesses with, with organizations of about 10 to 25 staff and, uh, and some solopreneurs as well. And we've worked with most, if not every kind of industry at this point, uh, been doing IT since early 2000s and uh, background in networking and server administration, workstation administration, cloud, email, security as far as password management is concerned, backups, user education seems to be one, one thing we do a lot of these days is uh, people just don't understand where the complexity of the internet is now. So we're just spending a lot of time helping people understand that. Wow. So when you're working with people and you're talking about cybersecurity and say we're talking to a small business owner, what are some of the security threats that we have to be concerned with? Uh, the number of threats is, is usually, your, but to, to make it simplified, it's user error more often than not. Um, humans are the weakest link in the security chain. My team and I can lock the computer down that if you're breathing on it, we're aware of it. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to have people understand that what pa proper password management and hygiene looks like, um, what multi-factor authentication looks like, what, uh, what attacks look like. Um, because you can get, you can fall victim to a social media uh, attack, a phishing attack, uh, a vishing uh, attack, which is over phones um, with someone impersonating it, which we call those social engineering. So educating people so that they understand how to identify who and what they're actually doing is a lot of what I spend my time doing. And I love doing it. Sweet. Well, I know that we, you know, when it comes to human error, we're always doing things to ourselves, you know, or by or, or steps that we've missed. But what about what if what if I'm just going along doing my business and I have a laptop and I spill something on it, like a glass of wine or a cup of coffee? Can you help me with that? That's a great question, Carrie. And uh, the true matter of uh, the truth of the matter comes down to it depends on the liquid you spill on it, and more importantly, do you have a backup from before? you spilled something on it. If ah. the answer to these questions is no, your options unfortunately can be fairly limited depending on how much the liquid actually permeated. If, it, if you have an external keyboard like we're using on our laptops, um, we just replace the keyboard. But if you spilled it on the actual laptop itself, uh, unfortunately, without a backup, you might lose most of your data. Now, that said, what we really push is making sure that you have a backup not just of the data, but of the entire system. And if things go sideways and you destroyed the machine, which if you spill coffee on a computer, more often than not, you're getting a new computer, um, which is fine because your data is gonna be backed up properly. But in some cases, we'll get you to do it on premise with an external drive. We'll also do it into a cloud backup with our partners in Canada, um, which have data centers in Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. So then it just comes down to how quick does your internet allow us to download a fresh copy? Nice. So you can get us back up and running right away if we've had this protection in advance. Yeah, and, and that's it's actually really easy to build it and get it set up and test it, which is the other part that a lot of people will do. Um, we have had organizations approach us that had a backup, never tested it. And when they needed it, it didn't work. So we make sure that all of our testing happens on a daily basis um, for most of our tools, um, weekly tests and or monthly. So we can tell you if the backup didn't work, we're taking another one. Stop everything we're doing. We need to make sure we need to find out why it didn't work so that we can get it working. But that's pretty wow. Well. It's usually I've never heard of anybody testing it, but what? of course, why wouldn't you? I mean, this makes sense that you'd want to make sure that it works before you have to have it working. 
if you've never tested it to validate it works, it doesn't. Wow. So what do you do for me for information security about protecting my information? How can you help me with that? Well, that's going to come down to the particular kind of information in question. Once again, the very first thing is education. If we can teach you how to use your information properly, the tools to use it with, what would be a weakness? Um, and that comes down to us observing and working with you over time to be able to identify that you may be doing something and not realize there's a better way or a more uh, secure way to do something. Uh, I realize I can't give you an exact answer to the question because the internet is a vast, uh, it's just, it's massive. So how people do things is different from, from person to person and tool from tool to tool. Um, so by working with you over time, we learn your, your habits, your methodology, and the tool you're using. Because some tools have very interesting methods of doing things, and we just have to adapt to that. So we can give you the basics and then build off of those. And that's where you really start building a security stack, is building on everything. Nice. Well, it seems that, you know, there's more and more attacks happening all the time in different ways against our information, against our computers, hacking. You know, I, I remember talking to you once and you said, you know, have you been hacked? Do you know if you've been hacked? How often does it happen that we've been hacked and we didn't even know? Um, that's a great question, Carrie. And that's going to come down to the tools that you're using online. More often than not, we as individuals are not the target. The platform that we may be using are targets. So a lot of the data breaches that you hear of are not so much the actual person was the target, but a tool they were using was compromised. Uh, a big one that most of us, myself, and I'm, I suspect you, if I ran a check, would have been compromised in was Adobe had a compromise, I think, in 2018, um, and then again in 2020. Uh, and it was just like their forms got compromised and a copy of the data got uh, released. And as part of that, it includes your name, your pass, perhaps your password, your email address, and any other personal information you had attached to your profile. That is how a breach actually happens. So your information gets out on the net because another service gets compromised and then your information is part of that compromise. The big issue there is if you're using that same or similar information, specifically passwords and emails, in multiple different locations, then it's compromised in every other location you're using it in, which is why we recommend proper password hygiene. Right. Yeah, I remember some very big institutions and stuff have been hacked and, and information has been compromised. And we sometimes don't realize how that affects us. I remember one time going in for an appointment somewhere and they said to me at the appointment, uh, the name of my uh, then boyfriend, now husband. And I said, how do you know that? Because I don't have him in your system. He's never been in your system before. And then I started thinking about the only place that I had ever listed him as you know, a go-to number and uh, so I immediately contacted them and said, you've been hacked because there's no way that this other place knew this information, except it's the only place online where it's exposed. And sure enough, <laughs> they looked into it and there was actually something that came out in the news about three weeks later about how that organization had been hacked. <laughs> my phone number, my, I probably tipped them off because uh, it just made sense to me. It was suddenly I realized that how, how did anyone have this? You know, and I think that's going on all over the place. And we don't know that it's happening and then we're affected by it. Is there anything that you can tell us about what to do once those things have happened? One of the, one of the interesting things that people don't realize as far as a data breach is concerned is it takes 47 days on average before a breach is known. So even my team, when we're protecting a client, we typically don't know of it the day up we usually know of it after the fact or several days later depending on the, the sophistication of the attacker to be clear if this the attacker is not very sophisticated we usually catch them right away like it can be i caught one guy in like 30 seconds and then i caught another guy a couple hours later 
but I had the full logs to identify what they did, when they did it, how they did it, and what they were trying to do to be able to catch them, lock them down, stop them, and undo the damage before a breach actually happens. Yeah. And, and that's the key thing. And that's the part that is the hardest part. IT security is a cat and mouse game. And more often than not, we are on the losing end of trying to catch somebody. So the best you can ever do is lock as many security holes up front as possible, be diligent, and keep testing it, which is what we really strive to do with our clients nowadays is just keep trying to break it. Because if we can't break it, then hopefully nobody else can either. And if we can, we fix it. So you kind of hack into the client's thing to see if it can be hacked. And if it can't be hacked, then you're, you got a heads up on that, that you got a good system going. Yeah, that's pretty and, cool. And we partner with organizations that are much more skilled at doing that all day, every day, and have them do that as well. Um, so that we can be your, the defending part of the, uh, the equation. Um, and then they would give us the information on, hey, we were able to identify this is a weakness in your environment. Okay, cool. Thank you. Now we can go, we can speak with the vendor. And if there's a security patch, we apply the patch. We then run the same test again. The right. test failed, or I guess succeeded in this case, because it's because they couldn't get through. And then we know, okay, we're, we're, we're good for now. Let's, let's try another test, make sure everything right. else is good. And it's an ever going cycle. And that is the IT world of the modern of modern 2023, that this is the way it works. That's fabulous. So if you were giving a solopreneur, a small business owner advice, tips, preventative tips, could you list, you know, one, two, three things that they should be doing up front that would help them kind of set things up for success for themselves? Well, I would say number one and two is call me. And number, uh, and number three would be password hygiene, which we would highly recommend a trusted password manager. Um, from there, it's backups. From there, it's keep documentation on what you actually have in your environment. So many clients approach us and have no idea what they have, whether it's computers or software or who, who physically as a human has access to what information. Um, so we would then educate people on what's referred to as the zero trust model and, and zero access models, which is people and machines are only allowed to access what they need to, when they need to, and block everything else by default. Right. If you block, if you block everything, in theory, you're protecting everything because nobody can do anything. But is it hard then to conduct business because you've got everything blocked up? No because a business only should be doing what they need to do their job. And there's because computers and IT is such a complex environment, if you don't block everything else and only allow specific things, you'll never know what your threat landscape looks like because anything can walk in the door and you'll never know where it came from. Wow. Well, that's super cool. So yeah, we're going to put your contact information underneath this video so people can reach out to you. And, you know, can they have like a consultation with you first to find out more? Yeah, we, we are happy to offer a, a free audit and a free chat. Just get on Zoom and, and talk to people and see where they're at. We, we work with organizations that have no IT. We work with, work, excuse me, we work with organizations that have IT because no IT provider can do 100%. So we'll even work with other IT people. We bring in other IT people to help our clients. Wonderful. So, just you know, that's awesome. I know that you're a huge collaborator too with other people that have other um, types of things that they're working with. And uh, so Scott is also a sponsor of CIBN Connect and has joined the organization to bring support to our network, to our masterminds, our networkers. And also um, just... To give that support to business owners within our network, because a lot of us are solopreneurs, small business owners, uh, medium sized business owners, and we need that help and support. And without that, we end up making these mistakes that cause downtime, cause retraining, cause remaking things. All of that is very expensive. So it is a lot better to have the backup and the support right up front rather than to be, you know, doing these knee jerk reactions and trying to fix it after the fact, it's a very costly way of doing business. 
So thank you for all that you do here for us. And uh, I, I tell people in the network all the time, if you are considering using this service, call Scott first. Find out what they can do for you because uh, it'll make a huge, huge difference in how smoothly you're able to run your business. So thank you, Scott, for all you do for us. Thank you very much for having us today, Carrie. We, we're very happy to be proactive, preventative, and less reactive. It makes life simple for our end users and for us. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for joining me today and uh, happy capitalism to everybody that's watching. Happy capitalism. Thank you, everyone.